Well, hello everybody. So today I've been trying to figure out how to do this um, translation in a way that it's not so long. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it by sections that I think are pertinent and instead of doing the whole video and that way you could see just what you're interested in. So today we're starting with the uh, part about uh, the president, uh, President AMLO is um, uh, puts, lets them know that he knows and had it researched and uh, knows that Reforma, the, uh, it's kind of like a sensationalist, uh, kind of like inquirer, uh, sensationalist, sensationalist newspaper. And uh, they're usually against uh, the president uh, where he, they're always trying to find fault in him. But anyway, so yesterday they made mention that uh, that he, there was some condoning of taxes happening with his current government and uh, that they had the evidence and this and that. So anyway, he said, well, we'll research it and today we'll be discussing his findings. And here we go. So we're going to be answering some questions today, but, but just, uh, he's going to have a parenthesis to clarify what uh, Reforma, the newspaper, said. And we said we were going to check into it to see the, if it was true that they had condoned the Texas for some persons, physical or moral, technically, and we demonstrated, and it was proven, that it wasn't true. It is uh, some technical stuff that was utilized in bad faith or without enough caution to make sure or to affirm something that does not conform with reality. This is what they put on there. He says, it looks like they went overboard a little bit, right? So therefore, the director of SAT is going to explain this, this supposed condemnation or, uh, or forgiveness, if they actually gave it or not. So they want you to explain the note. And And I'm going to let you know in advance that I've decided that they're going to continue with their positions because if they had, it had been true, then they would have to be quit their jobs. And we would have to accuse them before the competent authorities. But since it is not the case, we have a lot of confidence in them. And they're honest and integral people and they're professionals. But we need to clarify or clear things up because the conservative press, in this case, it was Reforma, and they just don't stop attacking us in different uh, ways and forms. But of course they have a right. It is their their job to to oppose themselves against what we're doing, but we have the right to replica and we're doing it. 
and we do it to to its full uh, full measure. So now he's letting her talk. So she says, "Hello, good day. Thank you for your attention. This is a little bit technical and complex, but nothing that you won't be able to understand." So, okay, so she's saying that there, this is going to be a little bit tricky because these uh, companies are actually non-existent, uh, probably ghost companies, which is what they're trying to get rid of. But they're, what they do is they um, uh, put them in a, like, in a sector so that later they can go after the people whose names appeared on any of the documentation and go after their right uh, their their money afterwards so they just kind of set it aside they don't close it out so she says we have not condoned or forgiven any taxes to anyone so the only thing is that they did was obey the fiscal or the the uh, actual code for for uh, taxes that's in the constitution. Ow, sorry, jeez, okay. getting old. All right. So anyway, she says the only thing they did was uh, to. Um, put put the uh, put them on hold for the moment. So she says in uh, code um, uh, the fiscal uh, tax code on in section 146a indicates what it is that they are allowed to do in the case of a situation such as this where there is no one that they can, um, or they have no funds, or they have someone that um, they can't find the, the person because it's a, a ghost company. So they have this um, uh, part of their job is to continuously be checking a list to see if any of the names that they've put on there as owing taxes come up. Um, and that is because the other agencies will let them know when someone that is on that list has money in an account anywhere. So if she says, so what we do is we put a quantity that we know we're supposed to charge. And from there, we can figure out how we are going to be doing the economical uh, adjustments, charges, etc. Oh, sorry. Uh, Google off. Oh. So they can't, um, so they, they have to make sure that they can do all the calculations and otherwise it would be incorrect. So what they do, she says, on this section 146a, they can do a uh, like accounting lower um, lowering, but it's only in order to put it on hold. She says this does not mean that the uh, debt was forgiven. So it's not like some kind of preferential treatment. 
It's absolutely the contrary. So what they do is they set it aside so that then they can use the uh, credits that they can use in order to uh, charge them. So that's the money that they will be able to collect now that um, they separate it from the one that they know they can't collect at the moment so that it's done for a later time. So she says that it meets two of the criteria, whether it's be um, they're unable to, um, they have no funds that they could collect from, or appear to have no funds, or that um, they, they, oh my gosh, I already forgot the second part. Let me go back for a moment here. I'm sorry, I need to know exactly what I'm gonna say right there. Okay, so she says one is they cannot locate the funds or the company or they cannot uh, uh, or they have no funds or, or, or uh, money uh, that's disposable income. She says if at any time they find out that there's funds, they have money that's become available to them, then they will pounce on them to get the money that they continue to owe. So they will uh, coordinate themselves uh, with a um, uh, financial departments uh, in order to uh, get the funds at some point. So she says that they will let the um, other departments know, the ones that are in charge of uh, money and uh, evaluating people's money, um, they, as soon as that they find out that this person has any money, they will have a red flag and they'll tell them to notify or notify them that there are funds available so they can go and collect what they owe. So as soon as they find out that there's any funds available, they will go and just uh, attach the money and, you know, hold it. But also it's uh, not enough if they have money that's outside of Mexico. So we need to have, be able to have access to be able to get the money. Uh, and if they're outside uh, of our country, so they need uh, some kind of uh, instrument that's international so that uh, they can uh, access uh, or communicate with them about getting access to the money or the funds so they can collect their taxes. Pues estamos expensas de que la autoridad extranjera 
So she she says that unless there was some kind of uh, rule like that, we're kind of at the disposal of whatever country they're holding their money in to uh, if they will release the funds or not. So there is no forgiveness. It is set aside in a different file. It's not forgiven forever or removed forever. And some of them had been uh, on hold for, for a very long time already. And there were some transactions that were audited in the past and, or old ones. And it, this uh, file could also show uh, perspectives or uh, funds that were not being able to be collected or, or be realized, is how they put it. So in this case, we have to be very responsible about the information we communicate with the Department of Hacienda and to Congress. So she wants to ask the supervisor of collecting taxes, Hector Luna, and he's been very responsible with all these matters. They are unpopular, but they are necessary. Because it is part of the uh, mandate or federal code. And uh, so that it has to be given just a little bit more. And then she said, there's another thing. And all this type of cancellations are always supervised by the superior uh, federation and by an internal organ of control. <coughs> and additionally, if we are not present, attending the credits that still need to be collected, because say, for example, they cannot locate the person, uh, for example. So the Federation could come and tell them, why are you not executing these credits? And we can't say, well, we just can't locate them. And then she says, they'll tell us, well, it's listed here on the file. It is your duty to execute it. That is why it is fundamental also for the internal judicial, judicial and uh, the people employees of SAT to be complained constantly. Otherwise, so we set it aside, and if we can't locate that person now, we will move on to one that we can locate and collect the funds from. So it would also be an irregularity for the, us, the functioning officials, not to be working on that. So she says, I don't know if you guys understood me completely, but I'll be on standby. And um, so then Nick, they're going to have the next person speak, the one who is the tax collector.
so hello and good day. The next one. So he said this is the um, uh, cartera, which is like the, I guess, the list of um, uh, controlled, um, let's see, equivalent control for the SAT, a representative. So here he says there's um, an amount of uh, $7,997,924 million pesos, which is the equivalent of 1,595,391 1, credits for the tax purposes. And that is a very large um, uh, file of charges. So he says, what is the cancellation of credits? In reality, I always mentioned that the theme of cancellation is heard, and that's how they've taken it, that's how it's been misinterpreted. He says, so I've always disliked that word, cancellation of credits. It doesn't look well, and it sounds like it can be misinterpreted. Um, but so I guess they're going to explain what it is. So some people think that it means to forgive a debt, but it is not debt forgiveness. It's just a uh, a uh, lowering for accounting purposes and to be able to compare accounts. So it's a sub-account where they put uh, the funds that after collecting the other funds, they will be able to access them. So they do an exhaustive evaluation, internal exam, um, uh, to see if there are any funds available. Financial section, uh, vehicles, etc. So after they've done their full investigation, they take it to that sub-account for uh, cancellation. Again, that word sounds very much like forgiveness. <laughs> But it does not forgive or liberate you from the um, obligation to pay. So at the moment that they find out that there are funds available, they will reinstate the debt and tr uh, or like put it where it's now receivable and they will go and collect it. So sometimes after they've done their valuation, they find out that they've got vehicles or something that they could uh, use after the fact. And so then they would reactivate the, the file and then uh, go to the collection uh, department. But besides that, SAT uh, does uh, put out this information in the transparency department. We publish this information. It is in there. And, it, and you can obtain it from there because we have it on our page. So at the time that we apply that sub-account or uh, the debt that appeared to be canceled, 
we publicize it. So then the uh, citizens will be able to find out that it is there. And also so they can help us. So sometimes after the fact um, that we've done all this and we put set it aside, then someone will let us know some information and then we can reopen it. So what are the effects of this cancellation? It's very much like when you have a bank account and there's no funds in it and you've taken all the money from it for charges that you can charge and there's nothing left. And as it stands, many countries around the world or many places in the world use this model in order to uh, do their taxes. It is normal within their processes to do this cancellation of debt to create a file to be able to focus on the funds that are uh, possible to collect from. So they will go after an account that is susceptible so that they can apply that debt. So what actions are done? He says, practically, after we analyze and we investigate all the information, all the patterns with which SAT um, is, um, SAT, I believe it's kind of like their, um, their tax collecting uh, service. We'll have to uh, look what the acronym stands for, but I'm pretty sure it's like, you know, like, uh, how we have the uh, uh, federal government and the uh, state government taxes like that. And then also uh, external accounts uh, that have funds. So then they put it in the section of credit and then it is put in their account in that way. So it will appear in the credit uh, department and it will affect them. And it will aff uh, affect it via the uh, credit bureau. And they also cancel digital uh, accounts. So what does this mean? That a company for which they practice the cancellation uh, process fiscally appears to be dead. And it will no longer be able to put in uh, accounts receivable and it can no longer operate. So since it has no funds, it cannot uh, be doing any business. So how will then they be able to respond uh, to when it comes time to pay their taxes again? So he will no longer be able to uh, perform uh, work. And if he had accounts, they would be frozen. And then they would uh, try, uh, give the information to CIA or from CIA to the financial uh, agency and then the tax department of the Federation. So what are the effects 
of the cancellation. So they become unable to operate the business anymore. And they will continue the investigation in order to uh, locate and realize goods of the contributors. Uh, so they will be susceptible for em embargo to be executed and uh, recuperate the debt. And it will continue to be. So they will be continuing to check uh, their um, business. They'll continue checking up on them every three months, uh, like doing a, a rechecking to see if they have any funds. And in case on the bottom one, it says in case they cannot locate uh, funds uh, or there exists no possibility of additional uh, collection, then they will uh, determine the responsibility uh, for social uh, action from the companies. Uh, and they will be subject to the CFF, whatever that is. So he says, what happens with the, um, like, people that had also uh, got interest in this uh, uh, property, or like, say, they, they have a vested interest? What happens to them? So eventually, they will go after any associates of that company. First, they would have to apply the responsibility to them. And then we can go after the properties and the um, um, goods of this person or the funds of this person. Any physical. So initially, the law itself allows us to go only strictly after the company's uh, finances. So he says only on the uh, actual company funds. So he says that they will be now considered a uh, risky client and uh, they will uh, take action to uh, start um, socially um, going after them. So why do we cancel? He says at the beginning, Okay, so here it says the attribution of canceling credit, fiscal credits, is a measure utilized with the administration tribunals uh, or tributaries <laughs> uh, that form the OCDE. Uh, and to its end, uh, it will count the uh, amounts of the credits that are uh, healthy and manageable. And then uh, the second part says, if they do not execute the faculty of canceling the uh, count or the, the credits uh, uh, via the CFF code, then the SAT or the government would be subject to being observed by the by the OIC, which is another government uh, section that oversees them, and they would be audited by the Superior Court of the Federation. And so then here, the information of that uh, file, uh, the credits 
uh, or importations, uh, this would become a, uh, uh, it will be made public every three months. And by doing this, they uh, give a message to the citizens that SAT has a great accounting of income that are still to be collected in the future. But in reality, this is not so because we only recover about 5% of these amounts due to uh, the impunities of contributors that are insolvent or companies that are created without active members. So these are like these ghost companies. So he says either they will collect the funds and close it out, or they will uh, put this in the accounting uh, file and then they will notify for it to be collected in the future. So he says this is the information of how it's done and we have been very punctual in putting out every bit of information as it happens into the um, Department of Transparency. So you can go online and look at any of these accounts using their Transparency Department. So it's in the SAT page. That's where the uh, uh, answers will be 20 questions regarding any company uh, they publicize everything as soon as they have the information. So it's also important because when it gets onto this file, um, then it is part uh, of the uh, end of the uh, closing of the case. That's after they've done all the auditing. Eventually, they will have to liquidate. They were unable to collect the debt. But that uh, will remain executable, or they will be able to um, uh, collect on it later because they set it aside. Unfortunately, all these um, uh, files that we've been carrying from the previous governments, we've only been able to recover 5%. So he says that's why it's important that we purge it and we set it aside so that we can have the uh, manageable amounts, not to have over a million and a half that's not collectible uh, in this case. So he says with all the people, all the technology, all the personnel that we have, we cannot uh, do enough in this department. So we need to uh, purge the system. So this is the in internal process that we do in order to do the cancellation. So when we receive the debt, we start the process of investigation. So we verify outside sources and internal sources. So we check, for example, if they have vehicles, um, if they've got uh, anything like that, because we have the 
the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles. There are lots of um, resources for uh, information that we can access. And these will help us to locate their um, uh, what they own. So we have about 30 areas uh, within our um, sector that we can use also to locate their funds. So it, we also can see, look into their accounts, their cards, their registry in the social security, in all areas in order to do the investigation. So we can see if uh, they have any uh, funds available for these contributors. And we analyze these results. And if we locate any fi uh, financing that's available, then we will proceed to effectively um, uh, start the process of collecting the funds. And then we would apply the amounts that have been recuperated. Si no se nada, but if we find nothing, o, o sea, parte el but we, or we only found some of it, and we were only able to get, and they could only pay a percentage of the debt, el resto va a esta clave. then the rest would go under this uh, uh, area. And then it would go into the situation of cancellation or lowering of the accounting. And this is the process that we execute internally. And it is done by the, fun the officials of SAT. Oh my gosh, there is no forgiveness, and it is not condoning taxes. Oh my word, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry, somehow we got disconnected there. It's there, but it's not there. I'm not sure where it's at. This one, maybe? Nope. Oh, my goodness. Where did we go? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and stop it there. Okay. So he says we clarified the system. And I'm sorry, I can't seem to find where it was.